The following interview was conducted with Morielle Williamson, uh, Executive Secretary of Ag Alumni Emeritus for the Purdue University Oral History Program. It took place on Wednesday, January 16, 2008 at Stewart Center and uh, on campus. The interviewer is Catherine Marquis, the Oral History Librarian. Welcome. Tell Thank us you. a little bit about where you were born and your parents in early years. Don't get me started. How many hours we got on this? <laughs> Talk I, to Steve. <laughs> <laughs> I was born in eastern Indiana, little town of Economy, Indiana. Uh, I'm going to have to go back there to be buried. I don't want to get on that because I've talked about it so much in my speeches, you know. But uh, eastern Indiana, I was rather typical farm boy, the 4-H route and all that, you know. Came to Purdue. Any, well, it's uh, about brothers and sisters and siblings. You tell about early years and also oh, high school okay. going down there. Yeah. Uh, high school, there was 18 in my class, and that was the biggest class that had ever graduated from there. And if was we had high school close to your house? Did you walk there? Or? Oh, no, I wasn't. that. Uh, those people that walked, they were lying. And nobody ever walked to school. <laughs> they all did, though. Did you walk? <laughs> uh, it was three miles from school. We rode a... First year, I wrote a Model T school hack, which wasn't much better than walking, maybe worse. A little old school was smelled. Well, did you go to a country school? A country school had a they had wooden floors, and they oiled them for what some reason. And it, there was a characteristic smell, you know, and I can smell it right now. But, but I was thinking about that, though. All the educators talk about they got to have a new school building, you know. Well, there was 18 in my class. I graduated third out of 18. I graduated second in the ag school at Purdue of several hundred, so I must have got a pretty good education someplace along the line. What did your parents do? They were farmers, mm -hmm. always were. My dad, mom lived poor their whole lives and died millionaires, typical farmers, you know, never took a vacation. Really. But I think about how they loved that farm, though, and I'm going through, don't want to get into this, but my wife and I are fixing our wills and stuff so that my son, we have one son, one daughter, can take the farm and carry it on, you know. Too many of them, they just kind of disappear into nothing, but uh, that farm was, to me, it was precious. Sure. You know. It's been in the family a long time. Yeah, it's, uh, my granddad had a thousand acres, and he was the richest guy in the community. Well, it's not that way anymore. It takes a thousand What kind years. of, what did you have? Did you have animals, or was well, it? Well, it was a general farm. When I left there to come to Purdue to work in 1953, it was kind of the beginning of the end of the general farm where you had we had 25 milk cows. That was a big, this farm up here in northern Indiana has got, what, 25,000, you know. Uh, we had hogs, chickens. Mom had the chickens. That's, the egg money was a truism, you know. Uh, sheep, a few sheep, a little bit of everything. Did you have some corn? Some what? Did corn? Oh, yeah, we raised it. It was it's good corn country, but you raised mm -hmm. most of the corn and the, Everything you raise to feed the animals. Now my son farms the same farm plus so quite a bit more, and uh, we sell everything. You know, we don't have any livestock at all. So it's it's all sold okay. on the board of trade and that sort sure. of thing. You know. okay. It's different, but I don't believe it's quite as much fun as it used to be. Okay. Then what what brought you to? Did you you got your degree from Purdue? How did yeah. you happen to choose Purdue and come here? And tell us a little bit about. Well, I came the first meal I had at Purdue University was at the Triple X. I always have to throw that. I I came to 4-H Roundup. Do you remember 4-H Roundup? Yeah, in your time, you, it was a big deal. I don't know. Do they still have it? Yeah. Uh, I was on the on our local 4-H grain judging team. They had stuff like that then. And the music hall was new, and I liked music. And I remember seeing the Glee Club. And there's some shows from Buckler here. That was the beginning of the war, but I think. So it was around 1940 when the war started, World War II? Yeah. Uh -huh. And the music hall was just pretty new. It was built in 40, I guess. Sure. And that impressed me. Well, you could put my whole hometown in that auditorium, you know. and. I wanted to get in the Glee Club. I, I run that more. I, mean, I got in the Glee Club. I, I tell people I majored in music and minored in studies. <laughs> uh, but I came because of 4-H. The 4-H was a wonderful, and still is. Uh, it was agricultural then. We showed cattle and hogs and dairy cattle mainly. And I met my wife at the county fair after the war. And a lot of our life hedged around those rural things, you know. Mm -hmm. And 
I loved it at Purdue. It was just kind of a continuation of. I never and I hope that you got to use this though. Got to be careful. I don't know that I got the bed. If I was gonna go out and make a living in New York City or something, I'd have to have a different education than I got here. But I got an education that I had more fun right. on the judging teams and stuff like that. What year did you enter Purdue? Forty-six. Okay. What was the campus like? Tell us uh, what it was. Boy, it was a mess. It was after the war. Yeah, right after the war, and uh, oh, there was probably eight or ten thousand students here. And then, when my class, class of fifty, eventually graduated, uh, there was thirty-five hundred in my class. And by the time I got out of here, Purdue was up to the twelve thousand, thirteen thousand. Uh, not many girls. In my class, you had veter one. the veterans who came, came yeah, by. Yeah, I see. I was one of the veterans. Right. One in eight was a girl in my class. Average age of our class when I graduated was twenty-eight. It, uh, if you just was going to have fun and loaf down at Harry's, it was a poor time to go because the guys who were here were old and they were ready to go to work. You know, I tell people they drank hard. Not me. I did. I was a Methodist, uh, but they worked hard. There were some that came on the GI Bill that probably should have gone to practical school or some have gone to work, you know, but uh, most of them are here on business. Mm -hmm. Where did you live when you were in here on campus? I just walked by it. I had to hurry. I was late to get over here. The parking garage, the Marcellor Street parking garage. Uh, well, where Grand House West is. I, I used to take, when I was here, took a lot of groups through home women and stuff. And I always like to show them, right, you go out the north door of the Grand House West. It's got a name now. I can't remember what it is. And there was a little clump of poplar trees. And I pointed that to these ladies. I said, my son was conceived right over there. It was in the house trailer. Every every house here in West Lafayette had two or three house trailers. Uh, and <laughs> 120 Sheet Street where I lived. Had they for the egg school. You know. Interesting. Yeah. It was a good place. Yeah. It? And the village, what was the village like when, during when, uh, Chauncey Village? Oh, well, Deeks Bookstore. Do you remember Bo Deeks? Was it there? Mm, it had, well, it was a little different name, but was, it's the, university now, book, was the University Bookstore It there? was there, uh -huh. yeah. Uh, I think it was still where it was, but Deeks is on the other side. That's correct. Right next to Harry's. That's right. And in South Horse, right. my wife worked there. Was, sure. I went to at the corner of Andrew Place and State Street. Where know, the Varsity uh, Apartments are. Yeah, across oh, to the, on the east side, where that big something's there. Okay. I lived at a co-op house there for two years. Okay. Uh, then I got married and lived down Sheet Street. But it was pretty ordinary. Mm -hmm. The village was pretty ordinary. Okay. Wasn't anything very new. There was a restaurant or two. And sure. Hair, uh, Frank's, or I believe it was Frank's Hamburger Joint there just north. and. Uh, but the Triple X was there. Oh, the Triple X was there, yep. <laughs> now out where we live out north, there is Route 66, which is the same, and sure. food's good, just right. like the same. Then um, what, did you, what was your career path after you graduated from Purdue? What did you do? I went back to the farm. I, I really, I started to say this, I, I didn't come to Purdue to learn to be an engineer or a teacher or anything. Sure. I came just to kind of get polished up on farming because right. I was What's the land grant institution? In yeah. And, and I was the oldest in uh, my family. There's three boys. I was, and I was got dad. Dad had 320 acres. That was way so bigger than average in those days. And he was getting way up in years. He was about 50. <laughs> I don't remember that ever being old. But <laughs> and I was just going to go back to the farm over in Wayne County because I loved that. I loved everything about agriculture. Uh, and that, that was a mistake. I went home. And Dad and Mom are good to me. They didn't say I couldn't come home. They should have. Uh, but I went, and they didn't need me. I mean, I had two younger brothers waiting to get in line, and uh, I guess the best thing that ever happened, I could, if we had hours, I could tell you all this. Uh, and I've got to have to you, say some things here that's not very citified. Uh, spring of, I graduated in 50. Mm -hmm. And April of 53, I had just, were you raised on a farm? <laughs> no, I'll have to explain it, or talk slow. 
Uh, okay. Uh, I turned the milk cows out on spring pasture. It was just getting warm, and they were anxious to get out, you know, and they ate too much, and they always got loose bowels. You know what? Are you with me? I understand. And I was there in the barn. I'd graduated with highest distinction here at Purdue, believe that. Good. And there I was in that barn, cleaning out all that ruddy manure. And I thought, and it'd run down in your boots, and the floor was getting slick. And I thought, there's got to be something better than this, you know. And that very day, I slipped and fell in that stuff and broke my knee. Now, as I lay there, uh, there's a vision appeared out of the hay bales while they get the ambulance out there or somebody <laughs> that said there's got to be a better way to make a living than this. Not that there's anything wrong with it. I was just there at the wrong, but I still love the farm. And so I came up here. I was a good student, so I went to see my friend Dave Fedler that you never knew, I don't suppose. No, I don't know. But Fedler Hall. His name after him, right. Uh, just a, I mean, he was an icon here. Right. And he didn't want to ever get the worst thing in the world was to get called into his office because you knew it was going to be bad. <laughs> but I never got called in that way. But I went in to see him. He said, I said, well, I've got two kids. Well, I wanted to go to graduate school. And uh, he, I said, I have to have a job. Well, he said, this Ag Alumni Secretary's job, it was a part-time job then, but uh, it's going to be open. And... Uh, we could probably work something out. So I went home, told my wife, and I kind of never thought I'd feel that good about leaving the farm that I love so much. And I came back and brought June and met with the board. And they said, we've decided to make this a full-time job. Well, the, my heart kind of fell. But Dave Fiddler said, you got the job if you want it. And I said, I really kind of wanted to go to Dairy Graduate School. But I'll tell you what, Dave, I'll take it for a year, and we'll see how it works out. That was the first of 37 years at that job. Mm -hmm. And I think the good Lord or somebody was guiding me, because that's what I, I wasn't a very good farmer. I liked to visit too much. I'd go to town to get a bolt, and I'd be back after lunch, you know. <laughs> uh, okay. But that was... Uh, that's the beginning of it. Yeah, yeah. The beginning of what it was. A very Tell us nice about the, the mission and goal. Our, our job is to give support and to promote goodwill among our farm alumni. What was your typical day? Tell us a little bit about. I didn't fill any forms out. I told Donna Lester, who took my place here in 1990. Uh, I don't remember ever even signing a contract. I surely did, though. I don't remember it. Uh, I kind of took. Didn't have a plan of work. We didn't have any long-range committees or anything like that. Where were you located? Where was the office located? It was right next to Dean Fedler over in Ag Administration. Well, Administration. Ag Administration, then Agriculture Hall, oh. which was Etymology Hall, which is now Fedler Hall. Right. Okay. It was in there for several years, and then an Ag Administration. Mm -hmm. And uh, well, I decided to just, I'd just go out and visit with him. So I would go out. We had county clubs. We organized county clubs. Uh, some big ones, some little ones, of, al of alumni, and I would take people out. I, Painter, the co basketball coach, I took him out to little old Purdue Ag meetings when he was a student playing basketball here. A lot of people, the coaches all liked to go, and I took people that had developed a new wheat or a new economic plan or something. So the job sort of grew with you. The job grew with you. Yeah, I did. Yeah, I really did. Now, although there was two of before me. Oh. But, yeah, the job as it was then, it kind of is now, not quite. It just grew around me. And it was a very social thing. In 37 years, I went to 5,000 meetings. Spoke at most of them. And not all at Purdue Ag meetings, but Farm Bureau annual meetings and all that sort of thing. I just decided I was going to, if they didn't tell me any differently, I'd just be in love with agriculture like I always was. And I suppose before those 30 year, 37 years are over, I knew almost every farmer in Indiana, or they knew me. And that's what I should have been doing all along. <laughs> <laughs> you got some, what about some ingredients for success? You mentioned that. Uh, well, I told the extension conference once when I spoke to them. The best way to do it is give yourself. Give your, all yourself. Never say no. To, to, 
I knew one county agent, and I never liked him quite as well after that. He said, I'd never take a meeting on a Friday night. That's what I'll do. I'll never do that. And I thought, you ought to be fired. <laughs> and I'd never really, and some, I'd judged baby contests, a lot of queen con county fair queen contests, hog shows, <laughs> everything. This fit right in with who you're born and raised. That's yeah, fine. yeah, I Perfect. Said, and I love farm people, and they were all part of it. The kids then were mostly, mostly farm kids, you know, not sure, all, but right. Uh, now, you know, the Ag Alumni, some of the programs I talk a little bit about. One is the Boilermaker Tractor Pull that started in uh, a couple uh, of years. They brought it was here, it's still going on, isn't it? The no, Boilermaker? it's not now. Oh, it uh, it was a wonderful thing. That, that, that was hosted by the Ag Alumni Association. Yeah, right? we were, okay. yeah. Uh, we sponsored a lot of these, and I was the announcer. Bob, uh, Bob, uh, forget it, I'll think of it. Yeah. And Aggie Con and I were the announcers. It was really a big time tractor in national. There were tractors there from all over the, the students put it on. Right. And it was a tough job because the leadership changed every year. And students uh, loved it, but sometimes a trait they, some of them had, it was bad was, well, we'll do that tomorrow. We'll put that off a little while, and that just, it didn't work on the tractor pull. But it, it was out. They built us a track out by when you take off in the airport, you could look down and see where it was there. Uh, and we had huge crowds. It was a national pull. Mm -hmm. But I remember it. Do you remember? Mm -hmm. It was. Some of the neighbors griped about them keeping them up all night and stuff. But it was a wonderful project because it took definitive management. Because the budget was over a hundred thousand dollars, you know, uh, it got caught up in the technology. Though it, for a while, their tractor pulling kind of went out of style. And when it started, there was just a farmer that had a mechanical knack that hopped up his truck. But then it got to where it was putting in twelve-cylinder engines and all that, and Big it stuff. got so expensive that it really and it kind of went out of style. But uh, and that was a pretty good time to discontinue it. You mm -hmm, know. Mm -hmm. But now, if it were the, still there, it's back in style now, probably. Sure. But it was a good, a wonderful project. Right. Another one was the Pioneer Farm Show that you have at the Indiana State yeah, Fair. Yeah, that is a, that's my show more than, I guess. And I I just stepped out about two years ago as manager, but I don't quite trust the guy that's there. He don't let, I hope he didn't read the hearings, but I'm still there. And, sure. Uh, well, your input is value because you've been there for so long. Yeah. And Good it's a place where you just, I stand around and visit with people. Now, 90% of the people that come to that thing are non-farm. <coughs> but uh, a lot of them were raised on the farm. And I, we thrash wheat with the old steam engine and the thrashers and all that. And we attract about 250,000 people in 12 days. And I would say it's the glue that holds the state fair together. Mm -hmm. Because Cause it's, it's a natural mix. I mean, it's the egg, you know. Yeah. John State. Ryan. Do you, know, do you remember John Ryan? I recognize the name. President of Indiana University. Sure. We we're supposed to hate all that, you know. Remember, that's what people said. He would always come to the Purdue Ag Fish Ride that we're going to talk about in a little bit. Yeah. And when uh, Art Hansen was here, <coughs> John Ryan was president of Indiana. And we had these, we're going to talk about this, but poor, uh, the president of Purdue always played the part as a smart hero. And John Ryan from Indiana was kind of the country bumpkin. And he... He liked it, you know, uh, and he he come and do his part faithfully every year, you know. And now he comes to the state fair and sees me. He's kind of lonesome, I think. Uh, he comes and spends all day out there, and we feed him, and he helps us with the right. work. So, uh, you know, that's a marvelous, and it's growing into a really a pretty influential. In fact, we're open in the fall for kids and stuff. Oh. And the big barn. Uh, did you talk about the big barn? No, we were mentioned. Steve was mentioned. Yeah, that Steve before. mentioned yeah. that. Uh -huh. Uh, we we uh, it came from uh, Cranard Farm. Every, well, there's a Cranard building on this place, you know. Sure. Uh, they had a fancy farm on the edge of Indianapolis, sent it to become houses, and they gave us that big barn, and we moved it to the camp, to the state fair campus. But it was on the wrong side of the street, so now it was across the street from the yeah, fairgrounds. It never got a big crowd, no. so we're moving it. You need to come down in March. I'll let you know. Okay. Uh, and if you give a thousand dollars, you can ride at it. <laughs> but uh, we're moving it over to the north of, of the of the racetrack there, and we're making that really an educational year-round center. And that that would be nice. Yeah, it, be that's nice. where it belongs. Sure, right. 
And uh, the Ag Alumni Seed Improvement Association is another program. That That's an unusual thing. Uh, well, I'll, let me go back a minute. Okay. In 1973, at Steiner's Tavern or some other place like that, the group of us from here got together the night before the Purdue Ag Fish Fry we're going to talk about. Uh, they were from, they were representatives from Illinois, Ohio, Michigan State, uh, Auburn, and a couple other, and to form a national association of ag alumni associations. At that time, that was 1973, I was the only full-time ag alumni secretary of the United States. And there were no development people begging you for money, not in the United States, in ag. Well, so we organized that, and uh, it's a wonderful, it's a national reputation. We have full-time executive director and all that. Came from, oh, it was the rest of the motels out north of town. Uh, the campus in? Yeah. You never know when you start something uh, what it's going to be, and it's just so, it's, it's a wonderfully productive organization with educational programs and all that. Well, <coughs> the reason I was able to work full-time as the Ag Alumni Seed Improvement. In the middle 30s, when hybrid corn was just uh, being developed, and uh, the Indiana Hybrid, the Indiana Corn Growers Association, I just came from the same thing, uh, they decided they needed to get into developing this new hybrid corn stuff that we had. And uh, they bought some land uh, out near where I live, out north of town here, to develop this new hybrid. And then they bought some more land. They bought Hazelwood Farms down at Romney. And that was got to be and still is a, a sizable seed multiplication agency that's owned by the Ag Alumni Association. <coughs> Makes money once in a while. But that's how we have. And that's your, your tie-in, the involvement with that. Uh -huh. And okay. they give us a grant every year to have an office. Mm -hmm. So that's how. And the couple before me were the same way. So. All right. And then you've also the Ag Alumni Trust Fund. Uh, yeah, that, that is, that's a philanthropic thing. Okay. Um, and uh, it's a part of the general uh, development office here sure. at Purdue. But uh, we have our own, uh, we give our own scholarships. In fact, June and I give several scholarships mm -hmm. through that. Have our own development staff over in. That just handles that. Yeah. yeah. Okay. You got, let's talk a little bit about outreach in the uh, Ag Alumni Trust one is that Operation Brain, Brain Power. Those are, a lot of those things have kind of disappeared. Yeah, the project uh, AgriVenture. Yeah, well, I say, got to have the thing. AgriVenture yeah. was, we brought in guidance counselors to okay. talk about it. And Operation Brain Power, one year, it's interesting, you think back, when you get old, you'll do this too. Uh, we had the farm director of WOWO Fort Wayne. And we have these, these clubs out there, had 50 clubs, they all brought kids in. He brought, he contrived that, and we'll bring a train. Now, I don't suppose you could get a train hardly from there to here now. But he <laughs> brought a, a train full of kids. From and, Fort Wayne? Yeah, and we met them you know, at the railroad station. And the biggest year, <coughs> excuse me, I've been out in the cold. Um, we had the bottom of the music hall full of kids like that. And, and then we had complicated, like eight in the residence halls. We tried to give them a college experience in one day. And they picked whether they wanted to see animal husbandry or home economics or what. A little bit like day on cam or not day on campus, but Purdue welcomes yeah. you and things of that sort. Yeah, so it's the same thing, but similar. I don't know if they, they did that very much then. Sure. And we had people like Tim Foley, I remember, spoke the football player, you remember? Sure. Him? Oh, yeah. People like that that spoke to him. And gave a one, and that was sponsored by, basically was sponsored by the local chapters that they paid to get them here. Sure. It was good for the kids. And then, of course, the, you still have your gala week, you know, pancake breakfast, and then Spring Fest, you people are involved. Yeah, yeah involved involved in that. That. You know, it's kind of interesting. Tim, uh, not, uh, Tom Turpin. Do you know Tom Turpin? The, probably one of the best teachers that Purdue ever had. But a wild man. And I won't say who the dean was or all, but, you know, he does things like eating. I got so sick of eating those mealworms. He'd go out and he'd give speeches, you know. He, he fries his mealworms. I've never had them, but I know <laughs> the program. <laughs> That's the part I was always my role to eat those things. Well, we changed deans, and the dean was kind of a biochemist. He was a farmer, and he thought maybe some of that stuff was kind of 
undignified, you know. That is, he thought that till, it, till we had these cockroach races that Tom Turpin had contrived, and 10,000 kids came, you know. After that, the deans, they thought that was just pretty good stuff, you know. <laughs> and uh, uh, he did a, did a lot of things. And we did, always did a lot of things like that. Uh, sure. For the, for the, it used to be all Mother's Day weekend and things in Spring yeah, Fest, whatever. Yeah. Well, let's talk a little bit about the Ag Alumni Fish Fry. Well, and that's probably the most famous thing. You know, back when, oh, 10 years or 12 years ago, hogs got real cheap, and the farmers were really kind of desperate. And... Delphi Packers at Delphi, meet the hog packers. They said, we'll give you pork chops. You can feed them pork chops. So Dinah, I was out there, but Dinah was there. And, and so she took the pork, and we eat pork, but it's still the fish fry. It has to I be know, they've not changed the name, right? Yeah. Uh, it's changed a lot. Back... Did it, when did it really start? Uh, I understand. It started it in the early 30s. Uh, 28 to 48 was called the Purdue Threshing Crew, the chicken yeah. and noodles. Yeah. Okay. But it was kind of the same kind of thing. Roscoe Frazier, you don't remember. Mm -hmm. uh, marvelous fellow. Was, was it held at Purdue? I mean, it was here at Purdue? It was here, here doing, oh, I can't remember what they called. At the same time, I had the fish fry when there's other things going on. Oh, like remember? farm farm days or farm yeah. science days? Farm or science days. Sure. And earlier than that was called. But it was a... They put on plays, and I think Dave Fiddler is it about what's new in agriculture sure. and stuff. Like a forecast and yeah, where it is. Then Roscoe Frazier had that chicken and noodles in the old ag engineering building over there. And uh, it was always kind of rowdy. But when I got here, it got kind of really rowdy. I mean, it was dirty or anything, but uh, well, one of the, I remember the first gags was old Olson and Johnson. You remember them. They sure. were from Indiana. Uh, they always had this gag that uh, I've seen them do several times, but uh, during the program, you have a policeman come up on the stage and say, I uh, hate to interrupt you, but uh, we we got a, an emergency here on the campus. Uh, there's a maniac loose on the campus. And it's reported he's out to get the man that was out with his wife last night. And you have about 100 people out in the crowd that run, fall out over each other and everything. Yeah, that was one of the first. Then it got pretty sophisticated. We had, it we had themes too. How did you? Oh, yeah. Right. The best theme we ever had. And uh, this, uh, a thing like the fish ride doesn't have a permanent life. Things change, you know. I could look at Dr. Jiski's eyes. The last one, well, the first one he was here to see that the fish ride wasn't long, long for this world. He didn't understand it or understand the motions or anything. But Art Hansen and Steve Berry, you know, they. I've seen newspaper articles where they were in costume, the outfit oh, yeah. and the theme. The best one, and everybody thought I was wonderful, but it wasn't me, was when we had Art Hansen as president, a marvelous actor. Dick Coles, dean of agriculture, marvelous actor. And Doc Bowen, who you might have seen last night on the governor's message. Yeah. He, he could do anything. And they He's all, almost 90 years old, isn't he? 90 years yeah. old. All right. And John Ryan from Indiana, all great actors. I mean, they'd make anybody look good. We did... The, King Arthur and the Knights of the Round Table. It was marvelous. And, uh, I bet. All in costume, right? Hanson used to say, oh, Lord, I used to hate those things. He didn't really hate them. Uh, <laughs> but he had to ride a, we got a big, beautiful Belgian horse. Had a breeder down south of town. He brought it in. And he rode that horse in, Dr. Hanson. Into the armory. Yeah. And, and the president of Indiana, John Ryan, he rode a little scrubby-looking pony. He was in the kingdom of Jordan is just kind of a poor one down south. But they played this role, and we had themes every year. We did the Peru Circus, and they brought a lot of their acts and trapezes and all. And uh, in that one, Doc Bowen was the, the lion tamer. He rode a circus wagon, you know. Uh, one year we had a western theme, and John Ryan held up the stagecoach and stole the old oaken bucket, <laughs> the real one. Uh, we did a theme every year. Sure. Like that. And and you had pe you had the governors and the IU president and, s and lieutenant governors and oh all of them yeah, yeah. But they they wouldn't dare miss you know somehow Art Ryan or Art Ryan Art Hansen got his calendar all mixed up and he was in Florida the day of the fish fry oh he was distraught I said don't worry Art we'll take care of it I got a Learjet a contractor at Evansville, 
and they picked him up down at the airport in Miami at 10.30 and had him here in time for the fish fry. <laughs> yeah. well, that's great. <laughs> but it was, a, it was really a rallying point for the Purdue Eggs. Right. And yeah. what would the average attendance be? What, well over 1,000? A couple of thousand? Oh, we got 2,500. Was it primarily within the state, or did some people come from out of oh, state? Oh, they came out of state. Uh -huh. uh, but primarily state. Yeah. It got so big that we, we were having trouble with the fire marshal. So Art Hanson put in some extra doors in the armory so it would be legal. You know? Sure. Um, it's different now. But right. it, but and then yeah. also you have the um, a week, sometimes there would be that week-long program uh, preceding the fish fry to it, forecast, and then it went to a, just a day or now it's just it was, happening. It was never, we had, no, it was all week long, but we had the science forecast that morning. Oh, okay. And that's where we brought them up to date on the latest research. And sure, that sort of okay. It was kind of serious, not very, but kind of. <laughs> <laughs> I think people didn't have a good time. They weren't yeah. going to listen very much anyway. Um, you had one of the things that you had was the mechanical eagle, the screaming eagle. Oh, <laughs> yeah. no. He did awful things as they flew over him. You know, <laughs> we had well, the funniest one though. Before we got so well known, they got to where they knew something was going to happen. Art Hanson, in his first year, I got two. I'll tell you about. Okay. His, he was giving his speech. That was his first year. He had it written out. Had written out and we had a podium there and he was serious about the thing it blew up just he just got started the thing blew up and fell to pieces and smoke the, flew the podium yeah oh. there went his speech flying down he said boy i'll get you but take the rest of them <laughs> and so for several years after we did podiums at one it got to going up then his speech was on there <laughs> and things like that uh Stephen Bering and his wife, they were pretty pretentious. But he didn't dare not like it, you know. But we built, and it's still in the Ag Alumni office, uh, our, Don Estichter. Do you remember Don Estichter? Worked in the shop here in this building. I he built a beautiful walnut grandfather's clock. Because uh, Mrs. Bering, she collected and liked clocks. It was beautiful. Well, it's seven feet tall. And he was sitting there up on the stage, a ticking, kind of ticking. And we had one guy play the dr a drunk. I don't even remember what the theme was out <laughs> here, but he was a drunk. He's now head of entomology department at Iowa State, I believe, out of there somewhere. Uh -huh. uh, and he was watering around being the drunk during the meal. And he watered up on the stage when the president, his wife, was being introduced, staggered and hit the clock. It had fell over and broke in a thousand pieces. It was, was this a gift for them? We were well, it was a dummy. You know, it looked oh. real. <laughs> oh, okay, okay. Uh, and uh, oh, she, the crowd just—it was just horrifying. You know? <laughs> the clock. Then they took it back and re the guy that built it, Dottie Stickter, here in the shop. He wouldn't come to the fish show because he didn't want to see it get ruined. But it was made to fall to pieces. Then he brought it back and. Reworked it. We put works in it. It's in the Anglo Mountains. Oh, today. okay. Right. Uh, well, I just always figured if you don't have a good time here, this ain't no use having it. You know. And we did seriously a lot more serious things than people think. You know. But the uh, uh, then it moved. You were going to talk about some changes. Some changes over time. It moved to what's now a university Inn or a conference center, and the program has changed. So uh, yeah. Now that, most of that happened after I'd retired, uh -huh. and Donya. You can see it coming, though. Uh, but the pork was still when you were here, is that correct? No, it was always fish. Oh, so it was after you left it. Yeah. Okay. We burnt the tent down. One, we fried the fish right there, you know. We're in the armory? <laughs> yeah. Oh. Uh, yeah, it, it, right it was a tent out north, just north, and we fried the fish oh, right there. Okay. And then brought it in. It got on fire one year and burnt the, t burnt the tent down. And Ooh. the safety guy, oh, those safety guys, you hate them, you know. But I still see the big guy, can't remember his name. We said, well, get some lard. And the, one of the guys that ran stores over there was one of the fish fryers. And I can still see that guy. It was 9 o'clock in the morning, and the tent was burning down. And the safety guy said, well, we got, we got to put this fish fry on some way. And he pitched in. We all pitched in and got a, another ton of lard and a bunch more fish. And we had the fish fry. Yeah. <laughs> but, uh, yeah. It didn't change when I was here, uh -huh. but it was, the period was changing. Is there any thought about going back to the fish, or are they going to stay, you think they'll stay with the pork? I think they'll stay with the pork. Okay. And, uh, well, I suppose when 
Delphi Packers goes broke or runs out of pork or something, yeah, they might. it might have to reconsider. Yeah. What kind of fish did you serve? We served, uh, when I came here, would you believe this, uh, we served walleyes. And the walleyes are really expensive. Oh, now, yes. Know? And uh, But most of the time it's like Lake Erie perch and catfish and stuff like that. Okay, and then you have people do the cooking and then serving and everything. Everybody pitched in, right? We all did it, yeah. 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 One of the things that you've had at that is that certificates of distinction. Uh -huh. And that's, and of course you received one, which is nice. But it started with four, but now there are more that they seem There's to be. Uh, they've kind of changed the power. It was still four a year when I was here. Uh -huh. uh, that's for people who have been not all farmers or businessmen, teachers, and just a... It's a nice award that they yeah, give, yeah. right. And now the National Agricultural Alumni and Development Association, you founded that and you served as president. I, Tell us a little bit about that. I founded more things. I've got myself in June says, why don't you get out of that stuff, you know? Same way with Prophetstown State Park. I was coming back to the State Fair and I thought, we got too many old junk down there. We needed, and they were, that was when the people, you were here when they were starting that, and people were writing letters to the editor about taking the farmer's land and uh, objecting to it. And I thought, they need a living history farm out there. And I wrote to the director of conservation, just kind of an empty letter. I thought he'd never, I got it. He read it and it was on the plan from then on out. So the farms out there is the, kind of result. We got a lot of stuff out there. So, uh, but I can't remember what we were talking about that before that. like cultural alumni. You've been involved. You started that and that's an ongoing association. Is that correct? Yes. Uh -huh. uh, and we, that's the one we started out here at the tavern the night before the fish fry. It's, a, it's kind of nice to, I mean the young kids kind of think it's, maybe they did it, you know, but us old timers that kind of hang around the edge and don't pay much attention sure. anymore. Sure. Uh, but it's a marvelous program. You never know when you get an idea what it's going to grow into. And we're going to talk about another one here, I think, before we get through this. Go ahead. Well, I was going to, the, the other, another thing I wanted to ask you about, the class of 1950, you were the president, and also the lecture hall, which rather unique in the sense that they kept that name and didn't, yeah. you know. So that was what I was going to talk about. Okay. Uh, uh, as I said, it, it was the first really large class at Purdue. How did that, did, how did the group of a class get together? How did you come up with the idea of this for the class gift? We, uh, I took uh, uh, Jim Blakesley, who was director of space management or something here, and people, there was about a dozen of us that got the same ones that planned the, you know, every, every five years you'd have a reunion. I guess I must have been president, I think, for 30 years, I suppose. And then that, for our, for our 25th, you may remember, you may have fallen over, and I don't know, between, see, I got to think, all the buildings have changed. You know where the lions are? Right. That now work, don't they? Yes. Uh, just north of that then, I don't know where it's still there, my picture's on it, but still, there were some trees and planters. Do you remember those big, they, they, mm -hmm. the trees didn't do very well, they died. So. But uh, we built that, so it was kind of a shady respite to there on our 25th. Then, before you know it, there came the 50th, you know. And uh, we got together, and you go to the Union Building, there's a clock every seven feet, and there's bulletin boards around here that nobody ever reads, and there's old gates and stuff. And and there's old, plaques. Yeah, plaques. And you got to do something on your 50th. So the first thing we decided was, as we sat around, we was going to do something as useful, not just a monument, but something that was useful. And uh, we, uh, of course, Jim Blakesley was head of that space. He said, I'll tell you one thing we really need around here is a, a lecture hall. Apparently we didn't have many big lecture halls, you know. And well, that sounded like a good idea. How in the world are we going to do that? Well, it was going to take about three and a half million dollars, I believe, something like that back then. Uh, and we met with Barry. I was in Bering's office every week for all that time, and he concurred with the idea, and we engaged uh, with development, and uh, a girl, can't remember her name now, fine lady that was assigned to that, to help us, and we got the architects, and it went in, what was, what was that, biology annex, do you remember that one? I know, the, I've seen pictures yeah. in the debris, so I know approximately. That's what we tore down, some yeah. people never quite got over that. But every once in a while, when I get kind of bigoted about myself, I go over and walk over and look at that building we built. It was needed, and all my 
grandkids have been are going through it now, you know. And it was a marvelous. It is. How did you? Uh, how was the site chosen? How tell us about that? Were there was there many options, or you wanted not it? Any. In the, do you want it in the center of Pope? Yeah, in the it went to the center to be used, not over at Ag campus or engineering campus. The center of the main the main yeah. part. Where okay. our kids and grandkids would go to it. Sure. And that that building was old and creaky, and that's and it was it had a lecture hall in it too. Mm -hmm. uh, had air conditioning, but you couldn't get many of the windows up, you know. Uh, that's where I went to class in there. And it was just kind of where it needed to be. And it, you've been in it. It's a beautiful building. Yeah, Have you noticed upstairs the uh, Johnson, those statues of a, a boy and a girl? You go up. Right, it's up there. Uh, Johnson, what is his name? I guess it was. Uh, he's famous in Georgetown, Virginia. Does life size. Monuments, and he did a one of a, a boy and a girl dressed like in the fifties. Yeah, yeah, senior cards. Nice. Even the books that the kids are holding were authentic books. Not, I mean, not real books, but were, the, uh, the the text that they'd be using. Yeah, mm -hmm. and a slide rule hey, that most kids don't even know what it is. Right. You know? Yeah. And the girl had a. I'd have to think she had a gold. Was it gold peppers? The girl's Something honorary. Like that. Yeah, I think and so. And the guy, the kid had a reamer hat on, I believe. Uh, which I was in that, so I was going to, but, uh, and, but the guy that did it wanted to put it outside like they got Neil Armstrong's up here now, but we were afraid to, because IU, the first IU, uh, somebody painted that red or something, you know, so it's upstairs there. Not many people really see it, but uh, it's really kind of It's a nice inside, I think, oh, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Because uh, outside they have all the benches and things yeah. that they can sit there. Uh, and one of the most heart-rending things that happened because that, that raising three and a half million dollars was a massive job. Now, the university helped us on some of it. Uh, uh, but uh, we did big fundraise calls, lots of letters. The dean, uh, uh, Dean Thompson at Ag School, came when we laid the cornerstone. And I said, what are you doing here? You're not in my class. He said, well, I just wanted to see what you've been doing for the last three years when it's supposed to be working for him, you know. Uh, but we had uh, one, uh, don't ask me names, uh, there was a fund drive chairman who gave a couple hundred thousand. And we had area chairman and, and uh, school chairman, and we really had worked it thoroughly. And we had to, you know, and got a lot of pretty good gifts, a lot of long term commitments and all. But some of us that didn't really have that kind of money then, but, but the best one of all. Was a, here came a, a note in a little envelope on yellow tablet paper written with a pencil and said, I'd, I'm not supposed to be doing this. So I'd like to give more, but I can't. There's $10 in there, $10 bill. And that's when I decided the plaque, if you see the plaque in there, the donors, there are about 750 donors. The guy who gave the 200000 his name is just the same size as that guy who gave the $10. That's how we arrive at that. We don't have gold givers and silver givers and all that sort of thing. It all it all went to the building. Yeah. Right. And, okay. uh, yeah. I guess that's the nicest thing we did is build that building. But the hardest job I had to do, you know how bullheaded President Deering was? Maybe he ever visited with you. He gets his mind set on something that takes a dynamite to move it. They gave me the job of going to him. We figured he'd probably want to name that after some famous professor or something. But they gave me the job of going over and changing his mind. But I never trust that we want, we insist that this be called the Class of 50 Hall. And he thought it was a good idea. And now kids call it 50, 50 yes, Hall. It, you know? it really is. Yeah. yeah. I think it's I think it's, it's unique. Yeah. And it, 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 it fits in. Yeah. You know? And it just seems like a natural good nature. That's right. Now, exactly. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Right. Um, how did you? What was your feeling the day that they had the dedication? How did you feel about that? Like right there. Yeah, just felt like all that sitting around that we did and worrying and waking up at night worrying and traveling those endless miles on the road. Uh, you just to hear it. Yeah, yeah, right. Okay. Um, what's the, the relationship the Ag alumni and the Purdue alumni? Is the Ag alumni older? I'm thinking oh, of, of this question for the researchers who will be you know, researching the university, and I just the, the difference between the two. Well, uh, they, 
It's a little different now. We're talking about my era now. Okay. It's entirely it was entirely independent because we were self-supporting. <coughs> Didn't charge any dues because of that farm I had. Okay. And we still have it, but now I think Danya. <coughs> it's different. I think she's a sub subsidiary of whatever they call. The P at Purdue Alumni Association. Of the Purdue Alumni Association, which everybody, every ag that joins that, somebody goes back. But I, as long as I was there, it was absolutely independent. Did you work? Have any uh, associations? Oh or yeah, Canada Joe Rudolph something? is my best friend. Sure. Okay. We travel with endless miles, you know. Right. But uh, they didn't horse around. They kind of played golf while we were out horsing around, you know. <laughs> Uh, the family farm. Farm. Well, production. let me say one more thing about oh. that. I look. Oh. I'm not. A, I'm not. A, don't have a very big ego. I guess maybe I do, but I got a smallish stud in it. I got the walls all lined with certificates. I got three uh, sagamores in the wall. But sometimes they gave you things like that rather than paying you anything. Well, I was going to get to the honors and awards, but yeah. go ahead. That's nice. Uh, but I just thought of it. I the alumni association gave me. The, I guess it's the Distinguished Alumnus Award, which is one of the highest awards the university gives, you know, and it's on my wall, and that was a result of my friendship and working with that. You got uh, two Sagamores. Three now. I got another Three? one now. Oh, yeah. <coughs> how, did they, did they, how did you come up? Do they like, give you a call? I ask people who've gotten them. Well, it was a surprise. Yeah. Well, one, I had a very protective secretary for years. Here comes one after the fish fry from Doc Bowen in the mailbox. Had my name is spelled Moray. It's not many people spell it right. Oh, she mailed fired that red back to him. <laughs> that uh, oh, most of them are kind of almost extemporaneous. You know, they give them. One was from uh, Doc Bowen. Did I get the names? Was right? it uh, Birchby? Oh. Did I, I mean Evan, Evan Bay give you one? That's yeah. right. Yeah. Of course, right. he had his dad and I were close friends. So yeah. Okay. Uh, and then. Frank O'Bannon, the last mm -hmm. one. And you're also, you and Bobby Knight are Kentucky Colonels. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> there was a quip in the paper one time that when he, after he got that, he said, now when I get to Kentucky, I expect people to stand up and salute when I walk into yeah. the arena. <laughs> I thought it was a big honor when I got that, but then I found out there's about 50000 <laughs> And you get a letter wanting to give money. It's just a big gimmick. <laughs> it oh. And you also got the Frederick L. Hovde Award. That and is, that means that's something. That's right. Yeah. Tell us a little bit about the Maury Williamson Scholarship for Excellence. Um, okay, I wish my wife were here to hear this because I never, I always got a fairly modest salary, but my wife raised up poor. Her dad died when she was eight years old. And her mother dressed chickens and took in washings and poor. They just never had any money to spend as a result. Now, June, my wife, a dear lady, is she's treasure of all our enterprises we have now. Stingiest woman I ever saw in my life. I never had a suit that wasn't a reject from someplace. She'd get mad she hears me. <laughs> but we never learned how to spend money. Now, we both, she was director of records over at the registrar's office. Oh, she worked on campus as yeah. well? Uh -huh. And uh, you know as well as I do, and you find out when retirement time comes, that are you on TIAA? You'd be glad, because that is a wonderful retirement. And June and I put 750 after we got the kids out of college, we put $750 a month additional in that for 25 years. But boy, that, so we retired fairly good, mm -hmm. more than we needed. We don't, still don't know how to spend money, but we got the farm. And, but we decided we needed to share the good experience. And... Uh, we, we started this uh, Memorial Williamson Scholarship. Now, that was also, they made a fund drive on that one. That mm -hmm. was right when I retired. And it's got now four or 500,000 in it, I guess. And uh, it's really, well, the, the kids that get it are in the upper fifth of their high school class and have an SAT of 1250. Is it for incoming Yeah, students? incoming freshmen. Okay. And they get $1,000 a year for four years, if they maintain a 3.5. And we've just had a, it's interesting, no matter how distinguished the record is, sometimes kids get in an area that they don't make it, you know. So we've had two. And we also started one lately that uh, 
we belong to the John Purdue Club and everything that comes along we belong to. We decided, and June can't get around very good, so we don't go to basketball games, although I went the other night, and we got a marvelous coach now, a good fellow. Uh, and, uh, of course, we always got good te- seats as long as she did all the eligibility of the athletes. We got good <laughs> seats. Uh, but she got to where she didn't like the crowds. And football, uh, if it's a nice day, I'm at the farm. If it's a bad day, I don't want to go and sit outside anyway. So we kind of got beyond going to all the sports things. So we consolidate all the money <clears throat> that we'd given to the university on a rather disorganized basis and give another, give a, we give one scholarship a year to uh, the outstanding ambassador. You know, most all the schools have ambassadors now. And we give a $1,000 a year to that. And it, it really makes you feel bad. That and those others, right. are, they all set it with us at the, and the, the president calls you by your first name. and they, It's just nice to see kids. and some, You get nice letters from them. And it's nice to have some interaction with the people who are the recipients. Yeah, well, it is. Yeah. I mean, some of them write letters and several send Christmas cards. And some... Uh, moms and dads at the state fair come up and they, that's you know, really nice yeah. you know yeah. the um, talk about farming which has changed you said the family farm production should remain in the hand how has the family farm changed over time it's not uh, you know some people still use the word uh, corporation farms as, as, as some evil dinosaur out here you know uh, that's kind of true in some cases but the family farm now. When I was, I mean, as I you told had you, a family farm. Yeah, right. we still have. Right. Uh, but it's sure different. I mean, you got to. I couldn't start the combine because it's got so many computers in it. Uh, it's just changed. Uh, I can remember Dad when I was 16. He said, "If you'll help me, and we'll we'll make ten thousand dollars this year, I'll give you an extra hundred dollars." I was 16 years old. Well, now. We take in hundreds of thousands and hope you get enough money to pay the bills. You know, it's it's a high risk, high skill. I I couldn't do it with what I know. My son is an excellent farmer. He's a master farmer. Got one of those buttons and all. But he's a skilled technician. You know. And uh, but we don't hardly any farms except the Amish and a few like that have everything. You don't have chickens. Those not. You know, the wives work. They don't have time to right, clean right. eggs, you know. Uh, and But more than knowledge. It's really key. Oh, boy. Yeah, it's a big I operation. Could, I could, uh, herbicide application. Um, I just came from a meeting when we came in here of the Indiana corn growers. We have a problem in that June and I went on a trip by train from Toronto to Vancouver. Expensive tour. We were the only poor people on it, I think. And but I made a mistake. And Jim said, I'm not taking it anymore. I announced that I was a director of the Indiana Corn Growers Association, which labeled me as a farmer. And they gave me a hard time about subsidies and $4 corn and starving babies and all that, you know. They love agriculture, but they don't know a dang good thing about it. You know, they read someplace about ethanol now. The new, oh, yeah. they should like that. You know, because that it's green compared to oil. You know, but and we have the same trouble. State fair people love us to death down there sometimes. You know, mm-hmm. and that's why we do these educational things to tell people why things happen. What the, the story is. Yeah. That's right. Exactly. But everybody down deep wants to be a farmer, even if it's a flowers out there by your doorstep, you know. That's just the basic nature of things. Right. They like to get out and get in the dirt. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. right. Well, tell us about some of the, you shared a little bit, but tell us about some of the things you've been involved in in your retirement. Well, uh, any, I'd say the, the state fair. Okay. I, uh, you still go to the fish fry, though, don't you? Oh, yeah. I, I missed one. It would, uh, for a while, <coughs> four or five years after I retired, a lady over in town and I organized a tour company for eggs. That's fun to take, too. Take a bunch of farmers, you know. They, we have a big time. And I missed the first fish fry after I retired. I was in Hawaii at the time. That was a strange feeling, you know. But I have missed it since then. It's different now, but it's fun. Yeah. And, yeah, well, it's a chance for you to 
renew old, old acquaintances that you don't get. I don't to have see. to go over a list of things I forgot. <laughs> right. No, right. Yeah. Oh, anything else? Well, are you? What's your involvement out of Prophetstown? Are you out there at all? Uh, not anymore. I was, okay. I was one of the organizers of it. Okay. And was on. Uh, it's interesting how you think, how I got involved in that. I kind of, I didn't tell you, but in 37 years, I took my date books and figured up. I went to over 5,000 meetings in those 37 years. Spoken most of them, you know. And I was, it's a matter of opinion, but kind of a funny speaker here, I guess. Uh, and boy, I have 5,000 speeches I give. I don't, but I don't give many speeches anymore. You get out of the public eye, and, uh, but I'm still known for now with the state fair. That's good, yeah. Well, have you got a favorite memory of Purdue? All of them. Oh, that yeah. sounds good. Uh, one of the things I really kind of remember is going to the Triple X, the first one I was <laughs> 15 years old and eating down there, you know, and eating the... It was the same location as it is now. Yeah, oh right. yeah. yeah. Yeah, I see some of those old pictures. Same color and everything. Yeah, that's yeah. right. Uh, uh, well, Co-op House was, that wasn't a favorite, really, that was a support, you know, but Oh, just class. I like class. I like studying, and reading, and stuff. Right. And I graduated very well, you know. But uh, I just enjoyed all. But the Glee Club probably was the thing you remember. The thing I got more good out of was the Glee Club. You learned. A good, good, a good organization. Right. Yeah. Presentation, all that. Can you think of an outstanding event in your life that comes to mind? Well, getting the Hubby Award was pretty much, I suppose, was. Award because wise. you had been here when he was here and knew yeah, him. Yeah, right. uh, we he traveled with me some too. So sure. Uh, I was state chairman for the Purdue Centennial, and we had big banquets in most every county, and he went to a lot of them too. And that was a that was a marvelous thing to do. A boy sure took took all your spare time to do it, you know. Sure. Uh, I guess one of the things that would happen before I came was. The first time I opened the door and looked in at that music hall, I couldn't believe it. The I could put my whole hometown in there, <laughs> and the gymnasium on the stage to boot. <laughs> uh, but I guess that would have to be yeah. one, you know. This is the final thing. Any uh, comments, general comments that you'd like to make in closing? Overall? Well, I guess it was a good thing I was an alumni secretary because I've never been to a college that's near as good as Purdue. But it has good conservative common sense. It has enough liberality about it that it brings up new ideas sure. and all. And uh, it was just, and uh, the scary thing is it all kind of happened by, if I hadn't have slipped to that cow manure and broke my knee, I'd have probably still been out there poor as Joe's <laughs> turkey in the freezing cold. <laughs> and everything. That it all, with a minimum of counseling, my life has been wonderful. That's good. Yeah. Well, thank you very much for you this bet. closing. Thank you very much, Maury. Okay, I, hope that I appreciate was what that. You <laughs>